Hey guys, welcome back to another day of Adobe Live. Um, my name is Arabella and I'm here joined uh, with Weston Fuller. Morning. Um, hey, good morning. <laughs> um, we are so excited for another day of just a jam-packed schedule. Um, hopefully finishing up some of the projects from yesterday. Um, but yeah, we're super excited um, to have you Weston and you know to see where you take this creation that we were working on yesterday. Um, but yeah, again, can we take a look at the schedule? Um, we have a lot going on. So earlier this morning, we had Victoria Pavlov for getting started in Adobe Fresco. And then Voodoo Val, of course, gave another Photoshop daily creative challenge uh, just before us. Um, so make sure to, if you haven't watched it, take a look at it because we will be reviewing some of those challenges later on today in our stream. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about the daily creative challenge in a little bit. Um, then we've got Weston for two hours until about 11.30. And then Julia, uh, we have her for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So exciting stuff. And then at noon, we've got Lindsay from Ink and Ellie uh, for packaging design. She is um, redesigning Serenity by Jan. So if you know, don't know, it's a candle line um, that's like a fictional candle line in the office. Super fun stuff. And then we've got Peter Del Tondo for the XD Daily Creative Challenge at 2 p.m. Uh, we've got Kyle at uh, T. Webster for the draw along at 2.30 p.m. And then we've got Voodoo Val and uh, Kat Willett for the design off at 3 p.m. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so definitely, you know, have this playing on in the back if you're working on some things. Um, always good. Adobe Live is just a great, honestly, a great resource and education um, tool that all of us should be tapping into. So thank you, Adobe Live, for, you know, having all this free education, basically. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let us know where you are watching from. I've got the chat like right open up next to me. Um, hey, Wade. <laughs> Hi, Biola. Oh, I remember Biola. She entered into the uh, design challenge yesterday. So good to see you. Hi, Reverb Mike. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, yeah, we've got a second day with Weston Fuller. He is, where are you based, Weston, again for... Anybody uh, I'm based in Southern California, just outside of San Diego. Awesome. Cool. So if you weren't, um, you know, watching yesterday's stream, he was working on this really cool composite um, using some of his own um, images that he shot plus Adobe stock. So really fun to watch you kind of put together something from scratch. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear a little bit more about you. I don't know if you wanted to pull up that little um, slide thing again to show. Uh. For anyone who what you know is new <laughs> or just joining today, yeah. So I'm uh, Weston Fuller. I'm based in Southern California in San Diego. Uh, I'm a professional photographer and retoucher. Mm -hmm. I specialize in composites, photo manipulation, and photo illustration work. A lot of my work is for clients or personal work for the fine art side. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest drive is I love I love stories, narratives, things that really draw the audience into the image yeah and for me you know i grew up a lot of my influence with photography came from magazines i was like really big into snowboarding and um for me a still image was like the iconic moment of yeah. what was happening mm -hmm. and so for me the whole goal is like creating these iconic moments that really stand out um this last picture i know uh, adobe live has the hero challenges happening right now so this was yes. a fun project <laughs> I did this project with another photographer. His name is Mike Lewis, great uh, San Amazing. Diego underwater and swim photographer. And then we worked with Nathan Adrian, who's the Olympic gold medalist. And so we were uh, creating this for the cover of a uh, swim swim magazine. So yeah, yeah. Kind of made him this big Incredible. Aquaman or <laughs> Merman, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, is, super uh, awesome. a little bit about my work. 
Yeah, I love that. Um, we've got some more people in the chat. Um, hi, Priyanshu from India. <laughs> Cherry from Southern India. We've got Krishna from Chicago. Hi, Ayush. Um, <laughs> Krishna says, catching up on yesterday's stream. Yes, so definitely jump right in and have this playing in the back because you'll learn some cool techniques um, from Weston. So. Yeah, just as a reminder real quick, um, you know, obviously we have all these superpower um, daily creative challenges. Um, so today's daily creative challenge was to design a newspaper advertisement for a superhero or a supervillain um, using Adobe fonts and the character styles panel. So um, make sure to be working that throughout this whole stream because we will be reviewing, um, hopefully, I think in, a, in about an hour and a half. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Oh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Paco. Um, so there is a challenge button up at the top above the chat. That is where you can click to then head over to Discord if you haven't joined. Um, yep. Thank you for putting the link up. <laughs> so make sure to sign up. Um, you know, it's a really great community that Adobe has put on. That's just, you know, you can even put up work. That's not necessarily part of the challenge there, too. So you know, we just really encourage everyone to share work and, you know, get feedback and all the fun stuff. So, yeah, cool. Well, we're ready to get into your, you know, composite, Weston. Um, for anyone who is just joining today, can you let them know, like, what you're working on? Yeah, so I uh, started off yesterday with uh, kind of a scene, a landscape scene. Mm -hmm. um, pull that up. Where... It was this landscape that I had from a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. I can just. Uh... I think it's so fascinating when like um, artists or photographers like kind of go back into like w previous work and like bring something new, you know, like make something well, new out of it. And right now is like the perfect time only yes. because. Uh, you know, work has been a little bit slow because of uh, world conditions and mm -hmm. uh, kind of staying at home, going through old archives. It's what I love about retouching is it allows you to kind of create something new from something that you had. Yeah, uh, that's so out, true. If I'm traveling, um, even if I'm traveling on assignment somewhere else, uh, if I, you know, have an evening, I see something that has nothing to do with where I'm at, but I mm -hmm. kind of strike something with me. I like to mm -hmm. snag some plates. And so that's kind of yeah. what happened with this picture is I was out in the Hawaiian Islands and we were there for another assignment, but on a day off, I was kind of just driving and saw this little snake of the road, had this great S, uh, S shape to it. I uh, loved the rock wall. And so I snagged a picture of it, always wanted to do something with it. Um, you know, ideally just a road makes me think of a car. So when yeah, uh, yeah. the opportunity came to start putting something together, I decided to You're try like, to see hey, what we can do. like, hey, let's do, do it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we kind of did some pre-edits in Lightroom. Yes. Dropped this into Photoshop, and then uh, one of the first, you know, one of the first things we did is we dropped a bus in here. Um, nice. Did the bus. Uh, let me turn some of my layers after the bus. <laughs> the uh, the sky was a little, you know, was blown out, so yes. it wasn't a great sky. It wasn't really adding anything to the image. So we decided to do a sky replacement. With the sky replacement, we had a little more brightness. That looks lovely. <laughs> so this is pretty much where we ended. Um, uh, one more layer here. So this a layer here, it was kind of a, a gradient. And I was mm -hmm. talking about how when you were looking over the horizon in the daylight, you know, yes. just the density of light, it gets a little bit lighter towards the horizon. So um, I added that to the sky. That's pretty much where we left it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I was not 100% awesome. with where we were yesterday <laughs> uh, because of just timing. I know we don't have a, like, it's... Yeah, I know. And everyone loves asking questions and we definitely encourage it a lot. So, you know, if you have questions, hopefully it doesn't slow you down too much. <laughs> no, and I, I, mean, I want people to walk away from this feeling like they definitely yes. got something out of it. So yes. um, I'd rather take some of the time, but uh, I went back and a few things, nothing, nothing huge, but a few things that we were talking about yesterday mm -hmm. uh, went in and just did a couple small uh, changes. And cool. so one of the things is was we were talking about like the horizon line and the density of light. Uh, I didn't do that. Usually it's on the foreground or the landscape as well. Mm -hmm. You can also have a little bit of hazing or a little yeah. bit of uh, lightning. So I didn't bring that in. So I added another gradient. Okay. Um, 
you can see on this little red layer that I'm clicking yes, on. Yes, yes. I can maybe zoom in so it's a little bit more dramatic, but I added oh, uh, yeah. a little bit of hazing right there. So it kind of That's, starts yeah. to shape the light just a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, when we're looking at this image, you can see the light source is really overhead. Mm -hmm. The shadows of these trees are coming kind of almost straight down. They're at like a little underneath. bit of an angle. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we are kind of looking for some some tells within the image that mm -hmm. would help us when we're compositing. We're looking at how we can uh, construct the image, how we can match shadows, reflections, yeah, uh, totally. light sources. So this was one, uh, because this is so overhead and it wasn't very bright, as we went back to that earlier image uh, where the sky was all blown out, it's because there was a large cloud cover. So mm -hmm. that does add for some softer light. It gives you me some flexibility when working with this image. So it's kind of yeah. you know, staying within a safe zone. Yeah. Um, but here's where we're at. Uh, one of the other things is I wanted to go back uh, wanted to clean up when I dropped in the sky yesterday, mm -hmm. there were, I had a really, really dirty sensor. So you can <laughs> see kind of like this spot yeah. right here. And so I wanted to go back and I needed to clean it up. So, um, where's my sky right up here. So I did some <laughs> cleanup in my sky and I nice. got rid of some of these, um, the spots, some of these spots. And the easiest way I did that was just, I used the magic heel brush, the spot heel yes. brush. And it's a favorite, you know, shortcut key yes. is just J. And that really gets you in there and you can just kind of, you can kind of click, uh, click on any of the spots that you're seeing in there mm -hmm. and it will clean it up. That went nice. white because of this layer that I have above it that it's capturing ah. because it's sampling all layers. And so if I turned off that one, you know, if I wanted to get rid of a layer, um, put that uh, okay. Under that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once I cleaned that back on, it was grabbing that brighter section from uh, the layer mm -hmm. above. So nice. Clean, cleaned up the sky a little bit. Uh, Perfect. Did the same thing with the. Where's our subject? <laughs> here we go. So here we are with uh, our car. Uh, yesterday we hadn't cleaned up the entire bus. Ah, uh, yes. So really up here in the rack where there was some detail, we used the magic pen tool to really use and work these hard shapes around yeah. the bus. And um, yeah, your selections bus. are so clean. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so this is kind of what our bus looked like, the picture. And that's what we brought it to. And then I wanted nice. to clean it up uh, some of these stickers, obviously that doesn't add to the image at all. So, uh, I just cleaned up the image, uh, cleaned up the bus so that we're working with something nice and clean. A lot of this cleanup, um, you know, I just did with the, the stamp tool. You nice. just kind of, you're working your way. I had to rebuild the front. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just a lot of, it's just a lot of brushwork. So it's yeah. nothing, you know, I don't want to, if there's any questions, I love to be able to answer those, but I didn't want to take too much time as we were trying to get farther yeah. down the, the road, you know, pun intended. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> pun intended. Um, oh, we have a couple more people in here. Hi, Sam Peterson. Um, and then we've got Ferry from Indonesia, Michelle from Montreal, Canada. Uh, Biel is from, uh, she's Nigerian, but she's living in Brooklyn, New York. So some more people. Awesome. Thank you for joining you guys. <laughs> So to kind of try to make the selection cleaner, um, after I uh, masked out more of the the rack up above, yes. it still had a little bit of uh, color casting. Uh, I wanted mm -hmm. to match that with the green, so I took some of the, the green brush, I uh, added a color layer, color cast, mm -hmm. and with that, nothing, it's just the brush. Yeah. Um, you know, I sample a color of where I want the color to come from, I grab that color, and then I just kind of start painting the edge of it. Very nice. Then, yeah, I you had a really great tip in yesterday's stream too about like that halo, like removing that halo. That was great. So if you didn't watch yesterday's stream, you can watch the replay of that too because it was really, it was good. <laughs> and then now we're starting to get really into the meat of the image. Let me address one more thing, I guess. Um, <laughs> so with the sky, the sky was still, because I brought it in, we didn't do any retouching uh, or post uh, work 
in Lightroom. It was just really the raw file dropped uh, right over. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we did lighten it. This was kind of the, the main color of the image. Yeah. Um, when I'm working with any aspect of the picture, I'm looking usually at three things and that's going to be like the contrast, the color and the saturation. Um, we've done that down lower. We did that yesterday as we were working with the bus mm -hmm. and uh, up here in the sky. Yesterday, we just really worked with the contrast. Um, after the show, I went back and said, oh, you know, I did forget to mention. So I was kind of looking at it. So I brought in a little bit of color. Um, mm -hmm. So I made it a little bit warmer. Nice. And then I dropped the saturations in the blues just a little bit. You mm -hmm. can see my layers here. Um, I know the, <laughs> the your layers yesterday were so different from your layers right now. <laughs> oh, they were. <laughs> Completely. You have now like this hierarchy and it's like very, <laughs> very intense. Uh, <laughs> if any retouch, I mean, you can get into some very, you know, very specific um, yes. layers. You know, no, this is have great. Layers upon layers. Uh, a little bit later in the show, we'll show. I got a tree outside of my window blowing. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> You, you get like light going. Across yeah. Face. But uh, I, I mean, you need to stay organized. And yeah. so, you know, part of, you know, starting right off today, um, I probably grabbed these. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, Steve uh, has a funny comment. They're like, need a human behind the wheel or is this VW by Elon Musk? <laughs> That is uh, a good point. Uh, there <laughs> definitely needs to be a human behind the wheel. So nice. So nice. I just like to have everything kind of grouped, organized. It lets me see where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're working here with the bus. This is kind of our main subject of the image. Uh, after we cut everything out, we had our clean cut. We pasted it on. Um, we tweaked the color just a little bit. Um, so we kind of came back, brought up the contrast a little bit, changed it. It was a little, let me zoom in here closer. It's probably easier to tell. It was a little cool because mm -hmm. it was looked like it was shot on a cloudy day. So yeah. we brought it up just a hair, kind of bring some warmth into it, added a little bit more saturation. And then I wanted that red uh, yesterday when we were talking, Mm -hmm. I shared a, a resource that I like to use, and that's going to uh, yes. just color.adobe.com. And Very cool. this picture, I'm really working with some complementary colors. So you can kind of change, you know, what kind of an image you want. Color mm -hmm. is super important when you start getting into compositing or any type of photography. Um, but I wanted to use these complementary colors. Um, using more of some of these greens, it mm -hmm. allows you to, you know, I could really kind of see where I wanted to put my my colors if I needed to, but yeah. I'm kind of staying in this green, which means I want to have kind of the reds as my complementary colors. Yeah. Um, I wanted that That's to really show cool. up in the VW. So we masked out the red, um, made the red pop just a little bit. Yeah, that looks really good. And this is... Sweet. So here's where we're at today. Uh, sorry, that's a little bit of a recap there for the last 10, 15 minutes. But um, now we need to start making everything grounded, make things okay. look like they're actually applying to the image. Um, oh, cool. So when we come in here to the bus, first thing is, is it's kind of like a sticker. You know, the, the, wheels, yeah. <laughs> are, the wheels are driving right over the side. Um, you know, if you can start layering things, uh, the more you can layer, uh, the more real it's going to be. So yeah. Uh, first thing I did was took the mask. Um, and I applied. I applied just kind of brought the, the bushes right over the wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of where I was going to start to today. So that was just a separate mask. Uh, I'm going to delete that mask so you can see kind of how that was created. Okay. Um, so here's our image. Biggest thing is, as I created this group for the bus, mm -hmm. uh, you can add a mask directly to your group oh, the folder. Okay. Yeah. And so what's nice is instead of going in and doing a mask on every single one of these layers or dropping and dragging it, 
Um, yeah. This is kind of just like a, a master mask. So it's <laughs> being applied to everything that's within the group. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So came down here. I'm going to get rid of our bus for just a second. Uh, Priyanshu has a question. Are dodge and burn required? They I'm assuming are. for the image and generally or uh dodge and burn is not required um it does help uh it's one of the last processes that i do as i bring in and i do a light dodge and burn mm -hmm. um my whole goal with a lot of my photography is i want it to look as real as possible and if you go heavy with the dodge and burn um you yeah really start tweaking the light and how highlights and shadows are created um, yeah so if you do a lot of dodge and burn a lot of images have a tendency to I, I see it go a little bit darker mm -hmm. you can hide some of the, you know, you can hide some of the effects or you can hide some of the, the edging in the blacks. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So if you can do it with minimal dodge and burn, I feel like you're going to have a more successful image. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it all Perfect. depends on your style, right? Like, you know, if that's your th jam, then why not? So we're going to get back here. We're going to sample the this road color right here because we don't need it. Um, or at least that's going to create, I've gone into the background layer, mm -hmm. uh, did a small selection of where these bushes are. So I'm not having to worry about the entire image. I uh, went into selection, went into the color range, and I'm going to create a quick mask. Uh, what's nice is you can see how detailed it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, this the, the little fuzzy slider can allow you to kind of go as heavy as you want with it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to come cool. up here back to our bus layer. And now we're just going to brush. My brush is huge. <laughs> I feel like the color or the color range tool is kind of like underrated like people don't use it as often and it's actually really good <laughs> i love it because it's quick um, yeah you can do a lot with it yeah so let's see right now i'm just brushing back inside nice. that selection that was created mm -hmm. by the color mask um yeah, there you go. And I'm brushing in where I feel like the bush would be the most natural. Yeah. Also, that takes care of that reflection on that hubcap. It, yeah, that, was, <laughs> that came up yesterday. There yeah. A, someone caught that as a good eye. Uh, yeah. Seeing what was happening to it. So. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We got a little bit of the road sticking out. So. It's crazy. Composites are kind of, there's like a science to them as far as like, you have to think about like how you were talking earlier, like how light hits on something or like perspective and like all of these elements that like you sh are like sp being spatially aware. Um, and it's, yeah, it's intense. <laughs> if you like, you know, long walks on the beach and in the park, uh, <laughs> you're, you know, you usually are noticing you're kind of like mm -hmm. you're stopping to smell the flowers in a way. And you're really yeah. noticing, you're really noticing the details of life. Um, it's one of the things I love about photography is like yeah. you really start to notice just your surroundings very differently than somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, we were talking uh, off camera, we were talking a little bit about, you know, different genres and uh, niches of photography. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I love composite photography because it's a collaboration of everything that I've done. Uh, I've done portrait photography, I've done landscape photography, yeah, uh, interior design photography, uh, product photography. So there's all these different genres of photography. Mm -hmm. And I feel com compositing is kind of like the melting pot of all of them because yeah. you use that's a good point. You get to use um, different aspects just to be able to create. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, I feel like I'm talking way too much. I <laughs> no, no, you're fine. <laughs> so Viola agrees. It requires extreme attention to details. Yeah, if you like to sit in front of your computer screen for long hours, you're in the right place. <laughs> yeah. So the next thing, one of the biggest things that's going to help, um, I mean, just turning, you know, just being able to get those bushes in front, mm -hmm. the wrong button, uh, really kind of starts to show where the, the bus is being grounded to. Yeah. So now it kind of hides it into the bushes. 
Uh, feels a little bit more realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step is going to be pulling that, pulling the image down and uh, creating your eye, kind of create an anchor from the landscape to the bus. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, I've got an action item. Um, it's a super simple action item, but it's called my shadows and shadows are going to help that a ton. So as soon as you add oh, shadows to that, okay. it's going to kind of yeah. anchor that. Um, That's cool that you have a shadows uh, action. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's one I made. It's just, all it is, is it creates this folder for me. And so when I ah. open up my folder, um, I, this is me geeking out with, with art, but I have all my different, uh, labels of shadows here yeah so yeah yeah no shadow, that's really cool again, kind of going back to light light is very dimensional and so with a shadow uh you're going to have your occlusion is going to be the darkest you know it's the darkest base mm, of the image and mm -hmm. then you kind of have your umbra which is kind of the main you know shape that you're going to get whoa it's getting there. detailed the umbra <laughs> is going to be you know kind of the, the edging so it yeah depends on your light source if it's a i feel like i remember light. that that word in a photography class at some point. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like if you're trying to talk about clouds, you know, it's like, yeah. I, I know there's different clouds. They're all clouds, but there's different types of clouds. So mm -hmm. you can kind of geek out with this, but- um, Yeah, yeah. I'm sure have, people in the chat would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> because we have light coming straight down, the and uh, uh, the anumbrum is kind of like where it starts to kind of come back at you. We don't have that because we're not having a light source coming right. towards us. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to get rid of that for simplicity. Um, and then let's just start here with the umbra right under the bus. These are all blank layers. So they're just, my action was just to create this kind of mm -hmm. gallery real quick. Um, and then I'm going to create, I'm going to just draw my own shadow in here uh, okay. and you're going to find out why. But <laughs> I feel like sh shadows just, can be like pretty difficult sometimes yeah it's uh it's an art <laughs> let's see we're gonna uh we're gonna grab this kind of shadow right here we're gonna cheat and we're gonna use that as a sample so that we kind of get the same color tones of mm -hmm. what's coming from here mm -hmm. and we're gonna just drag that or we're gonna just paint that into our bus so it looks a little weird it covered up some of the bushes uh, we're going to take care of that in just a little bit. Uh, actually, let's take care of it right now. So because this shadow is not within the grouping of the bus, mm. uh, as soon as I drop that in here, because we had that master layer up above, it means I don't have to go do another mask with it. And now it's it automatically puts it kind of at the top of the group. So we'll put this at the bottom of the group. There we go. It's kind of nice. within underneath our bus so there we yeah. go um, now we're going to give it some shape because uh, this is the umbra it's going to be a little bit larger let's bring this we're just going to shape it just a little bit mm -hmm. nice our shadow is going to come out more to the front of <laughs> oh michelle's really nice she says i get lots of helping tips and behance live and the people in the chat and thanks to adobe behance tutorials yep adobe live's great <laughs> just always you know being presented to like all these amazing creatives including you weston like just sharing all the tips and your knowledge so it's really a wonderful space this is what our community is about yeah like, I mean, it really it's, is it's, it's really you know it's really, it is helping each other out, but it's yeah. we kind of art begets art, you know, is the saying. And so like we all learn from each other. Totally. And I think that there's, um, there's something special about like people wanting to share, you know, um, share their knowledge. And I don't know, it only helps all of us, you know, the industry in general. So. So I'm going cool. just, uh, I've now moved up to. Sorry, we moved up to the <laughs> occlusion. The occlusion is going to be the darkest part of okay. our. Cool. Because we're going to make it nice and dark. We're going to move it up top because the shadow, it is like a softer light. Mm -hmm. 
we're going to come in here to our blur. This is directly under the bus. Yeah. That's cool. And let's come in together. <laughs> Yeah, guys, so about an hour until we head over to Discord for the design feedback. So make sure that you're still working on your um, newspaper advertisement for your superhero or supervillain. And yeah, we're excited to um, see your challenges. So make sure you're still working on that. Okay, we're almost there. No, oh, that's looking real good. This is going to be the farthest edge. So I'm going to kind of see that. I mean, there is a little bit a harder light because you can see it kind of right here on the side of these bushes. Mm -hmm. You can see the shape of the bush. So you don't want it too, you know, too soft. Um, you know, really, you know, we really are trying to match that look of what the bus yeah. is. Um, and then if we came up here just a little bit, you can see where this tree is. And the light is pushing it a little bit here to the side. So I kind of have it probably a little bit too front. Yeah, kind of needs frontal. to come closer. So we kind of need to start pushing it towards the bush. Mm -hmm. And shape wise, this is kind of just a really rough shape. <laughs> I'm going to do something different. We're going to um, clean this up. <laughs> Priyanshu says, wow, shadow from the shape I mostly do with the soft round brush. There's so many ways. <laughs> How do you know, um, like, do you just kind of play with the Gaussian blur, like, and test it out and see? Yeah, I mean, usually I'm looking at a uh, different source mm -hmm. um, where I want it, you know, where I want it to be. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this. And what we're going to do is, um, I like I like using things. I mean, I like to use the the slider tools only mm -hmm. to kind of see. Like I said, I'm gauging it over here, so it gives me uh, it gives me kind of a visual of yeah. what I'm trying to mask. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the shape of the bus because of this the way the bumper was, and the bumper I didn't really I. The sh you know, shadows aren't completely round. So <laughs> yeah. I wanted to kind of fix that. So I'm going to just take the shape of the bus. Okay. Uh, I'm going to clean it in. Oh, uh, so hi, Salila. <laughs> She's new to Photoshop and this is her first class. <laughs> How cute. I love that. That's great. Well, you're going to enjoy all of these Adobe Lives because you're going to learn a lot. So super fun. So oh, what yeah. I've, done is I've kind of painted a the shape of the bus uh -huh. that you can see here, um, only because I want to keep kind of true to the shape. Oh, and then flip it. flip it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. When I flipped it, get way down here. Oh, why did it do that? <laughs> nice. That's so intricate. I think that's what will make composites a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit more successful. Yeah. Um, then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to apply a mask. Uh, I don't want to lose that in case I have to come back to it. Mm -hmm. um, And let's just invert it. And we're going to bring back just where we want the shape of the bus. Yeah. My whole goal was really to capture and keep the bumper. Yeah. But just a little bit more. Nice. That's great. We're going to go back to the Gaussian blur that we had before.
using a pretty hard brush here. <laughs> this is very cool. Yeah, yeah, all starting to come together. I have a question for you, Wesson. Yeah. Um, where do you draw your inspiration from? Um, you know, the cheesy answer is life. Uh, <laughs> you know, I bet I get a lot of inspiration from my kids, uh, my family. If you, you know, if you're around kids, you yeah. usually kind of like oh, your imagination. Yeah. Like tap, you know, if you can tap into a kid's imagination, you have hours and hours of inspiration. Oh, that's yeah, just really have a, sweet. Just have a notebook. <laughs> yeah. And just like start, you know, start writing things down of what they're, you know, what they're doing um, or what they say. Their dreams or nightmares. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it really is cool. That uh, is super cool. How old are they? I have uh, an 11, a nine and a s almost six year old. Oh, that's really sweet. That's awesome. Going yeah, I bet that's super that. fun. <laughs> Once again, you kind of brought up like how far do we take it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously it was way too much, but that's feeling about right. And because this is our penumbra, it's going to be the farthest part of our edge. I'm going to bring this back in our opacity. Mm -hmm. Just start trying to get that where it needs to be. And our umbras at 100%, I'm going to bring that back also. Oh, yeah. And then zoom back out here just a little. Because the light is coming from behind the bus, uh, you know, you would not have a hard edge going directly right up to the bottom of this. And so mm -hmm. your light really would be coming into the back of this. So that needs to be corrected. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. And we're just going to kind of draw this out. So oh, OK, I see that, yeah. Yeah, that's starting to make it come together, really, and ground it in. <laughs> um, question from Priyanshu, is blends mode required to make a realistic shadow? Um, if you can expand on that, when you say blends mode. Um, Maybe like the blending mode on the layer or... Yeah, Priyanshu, can you maybe so elaborate? Yeah, if we, I mean, if we went up here, like I'm not, I'm, I haven't used any blending. Um, you know, you can add these, and I do use these. Um, you know, if you want to see like how much, you know, if I'm changing this, if that's what we're referring to, so we're changing. Yeah. Um, you know, overlay. I don't think it's 100% necessary. I yeah. do use. I have a tendency to use soft brush a lot. Mm hmm. Um, or soft light. Soft light. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, you haven't been working with them so far. I, ha so, I haven't so yeah. far. Um, you know, it is nice because what's if you are using your blend mode, if once again, if this is what's being referenced, um, what's nice about this is it does bring some of the texture in. Like this road mm. is pretty smooth. Yeah. But if you are working with something that has uh, a lot of texture, use the blend mode because the blend mode does keep that texture. The texture kind of seeps through, and you can yeah. it makes it more realistic. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to keep that with hard light. If you can see, um, all it did was it kind of brought some of the noise that's under this bus. Mm -hmm. in, so it's just not a, a solid paintbrush. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep that with the hard light. If uh, that's not what you're referencing, please let me know. And I'll try to do, uh, <laughs> do my best to answer that. It seems like that was what he was referencing. So that's good. Okay, <laughs> he just said good. blending mode and layers panel. Yep. And then the last thing I want to do um, with my shadow is because we have our shadow here, you do have a shadow that's going to be cast over here onto the uh, the bush. Mm -hmm. the, the bus is in front of it, or yeah. behind it, but in front of the light source. And so we're going to have to come back over here to our landscape. Uh, I'm going to add another like folder. Here. Yeah. Nice. And just bring a little bit over here to where the bushes are going to be. Uh-huh. 
So fascinating. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty rough. This is just, you know, I'm just, I'm just rushing this in. <laughs> Now, earlier before we got on the live, um, you were kind of mentioning that you had some ideas for how you're going to take this, um, but you were also open to suggestions. So I, um, we can open it up to the chat and be like, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, uh, you know, we finished yesterday and I was kind of just keeping this on my mind. I was curious, you know, where we were going to be um, trying to make sure that, you know, there was a, a, you know, a little bit of a wow factor in here. <laughs> Uh, to some of these blend modes. I'm going to change that to overlay. Um, that way it keeps some of this texture. Oh, yeah, I'm there you go. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to bring down the opacity of that just so I can control it just a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes if you use opacity, it kind of saturates things a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to control that saturation by using my opacity. Yeah. Okay, so now that we're here, Here's where we are. This is our bus. This That's is really our, good. That uh, helps it like really cement it into the image. Now it's a little bit, maybe a little bit too light. So I'm going to just take the entire group and I'm going to drop that shadow down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nice. So it doesn't feel so, so strong. Yeah. And yeah, because it is kind of soft. Like the shadows on, like from the trees, are like a tiny bit soft. Yeah, and I mean, I might go. I'll go back and I'll end up revisiting yeah. the, the image multiple times. Um, you know, because once we start adding or we're changing things, we change some light. These mm -hmm. shadows might stand out a little bit stronger, or they might not be exactly right. right. So once again, the plug for go ahead and always name things. Try to use you know hierarchies, organizations, yes. groupings. That way you can go back and find things uh, very mm -hmm. quickly. Um, so this is kind of where you can see where we're at. And, you know, I'm feeling pretty good with those uh, those shadows. Yeah, they look great. Kind of went from kind of the sticker look that we had going <laughs> yeah. with the bus to something that seems a little bit more realistic. Yeah, for sure. Ahmed um, had a quick question. Um, yeah. You touched on this yesterday, and I think we'll let him know to watch yesterday's stream too, because I think that one shows it better. But um, what is the best way to match perspective? Sorry, I didn't catch the beginning of the stream. So maybe um, like a quick, quick answer. Yeah, I mean, there's a perspective. If you go under your selections, um, or sorry, under your filters, you can do the vanishing point right here. Ah. So your vanishing point will bring it up and you can set your vanishing point right on your hori horizon. Mm -hmm. So that does let you kind of see where you should be shrinking or growing things. Got uh, it. With this image, I cheated a little bit only because <laughs> yeah. I took this picture, the picture was mine. And I was, as I was taking this picture, there was a car that drove by. And so I knew I wanted to be putting a car into this picture at some point. Yeah, yeah. And so what it is, I took the, as the car drove through the picture, I took pictures of it at different points. Yeah. Um, and That's so, so smart. I went back, I looked at that image yesterday and said, okay, this is about the size. Now I cheated it just a little bit. <laughs> my, it's my subject. So I hey, if it helps you, it. you know, it helps you achieve it quicker. Great. <laughs> That's right. And so, so this, you know, so here's where we are. Here's where we're at. If it looks cool. uh, natural, then we, you know, we haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. So I'm um, make sure to watch yesterday's stream because he goes over it um, just exactly how he was able to match it up. Um, but he also, you know, he had a little help from having that car drive down the road. So I'm adding, um, adding another layer here. What's happening is the bus is not popping out as much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when there's, once again, there's, there's dimension within light. And so if, if light is hitting this bus, it's going to actually use, you know, there will be some refraction of light that's coming off of it. Right. Um, so I've gone ahead and I'm going to create a, a, a gradient. Um, this is something I do a lot when I'm trying to put emphasis uh, into where I want the eye of, mm -hmm. of the audience to go to. So, um, to kind of shape this. You know, you're going to have a little bit of light coming off of this bus. Oh, yeah. Not that we want it like it looks like it's coming from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, 
so this pathway gets, to heaven. <laughs> yeah, so this gets into, you know, here's normal. Uh, that goes back to where that previous comment about how mm -hmm. um, the overlay mode will kind of saturate things. Yeah. If yeah. I use a soft light, it kind of creates a nice haze. Um, it does add some contrast around the subject, so it kind of brings it out. Yeah. That is a little strong. Um, but you're right, it does lead your eye right there. So it's definitely. Cool. And we've also got someone who just uh, joined the chat. Hey, Arthur from Brazil. <laughs> um, again, you guys, if you're watching this from YouTube, make sure to head over to behance.net slash live because then you can join in on the chat and we can engage and see your comments and questions. So definitely make sure to hop on over. And again, if you're just joining us, we're here with Weston Fuller. He is a uh, photographer and retoucher. We're working on this really fun composite um, this like nice bright day with this little, cute little VW bus driving down. <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty good with where this is. Um, one thing that I was noticing that stood out to me yesterday, um, I was trying to see what would happen with it, and that is uh, this road is maybe a little bright for me. Mm -hmm. So once again, I'm going to go back. Cool. <laughs> yes, Ahmed, please watch yesterday's stream because it was really good and he showed a lot of techniques too. So definitely, definitely a good one to watch. Ooh, Rebecca's getting technical. She's like, where's the location of the sun? <laughs> Should be around one to two o'clock maybe. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. All I can say is it was <laughs> overhead. Yeah, yes, kind of using those. <laughs> that sounds about to right. Show us where we're at. Um, yeah. So once again, doing kind of a quick, quick selection um, because this road is all one color. Um, we're going to grab that. We're going to change the road. Um, get it as much as possible, and that's really just all we want. Mm -hmm. Let's bring that in. Nice. And we're going to do a curves layer. Curves layer automatically put the mask in there that was masked out. Mm -hmm. And if we can just darken that road just a little bit, kind of that wet, you know, the wet asphalt look. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks to everyone in the chat who checked in about oh, uh, Weston's mic. <laughs> so helpful. <laughs> and I just brought up the mask layer. We're going to just fix this just a little bit. Make sure it's not bleeding or some of that color is not bleeding into the shadows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like I sometimes like um, I, you're in quick mask mode, right? Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you have to like change the colors because whatever the color you have on your regular is like, and depending on the image that you work with, you always have to change the color. Yeah. If we had the red bus up there, you'd, <laughs> yeah. you'd be kind of struggling to see where the <laughs> yeah. mask was with the bus. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, once again, that's just kind of changing the color mm -hmm. Bring our bus back in there. See what it's looking like. Yeah. Yeah. That looks good. Helps. It kind of helps that shadow as well that we were working on mm -hmm. on the road. And then the only other thing is staying on the mask. Uh, once again, talking about how that's going to get a little bit lighter in the background on mm -hmm. that road. Um, let me just grab the gradient tool. And it's going to feather the light over that road so it's just a little bit brighter in the background yeah since that's kind of where the light's coming from there we go very nice happy with that 
Okay. That also changes the brightness of our bus, maybe mm -hmm. just a little bit. Yeah, that's looking real good. Okay, so um, with any picture, you know, it's, we want to create, we want to create a narrative. We want, you know, we want yeah. something to be happening in this picture. Um, and so it's, you know, it's not just a driverless bus going down the road. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to add, I wanted to add a little bit to it. It's kind of a summer day, you know, it's a road trip feel. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, this, this photo looks very happy. <laughs> I'm going to bring up uh, yesterday, I was thinking about, oh, what are we going to keep adding to it? I went to Adobe Stock and I did not find um, what I was looking for. So I hurrying borrowed some surfboards from the kids in my neighborhood. Oh. <laughs> and hurrying did a quick shoot out in front of my house. Wow. <laughs> um, just grabbed, I mean, nothing special, but we just grabbed some images. Like yesterday? <laughs> Just yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's uh that's commitment. <laughs> You're like, well, if I can't find it, I'll make it myself. That's right. So um sweet. So we've got the pictures of these surfboards. Um mm -hmm. let's go ahead and see how it let's see how well our the mm -hmm. new tool the select subject tool works in here yes works pretty well right on white mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if you didn't catch uh yesterday's stream uh weston talked about how he loved likes to you have like his images against a white um kind of just backdrop because then it's easier color wise to see how things change and all that so we have this tool uh once again we're just going to Zoom here real quick, make sure we got everything that we needed. Yeah. Nice. Get rid of that. Let's see if we can. Nice. What shortcut was that where you added it? Um, so I'm on my quick mask tool. Uh -huh. And under the quick mask, I was just quickly grabbing um, the quick select tool. Got it. Nice. It's a little bit of haloing happening right here. But... And I have some. Yeah, oh, sweet. <laughs> what, um, Weston, what has been like your favorite composite that you've made? Uh, my favorite composite was my kind of my first real composite that I ever did. Mm -hmm. um, and that was back in that was, you know, it was an art school. I was working on my thesis project for my master's mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't really know, like I was kind of exploring composites. Didn't yeah. Know, something I, you know, I really, really wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, I, I created an image and it's called Syrup. And it was <laughs> an image where my thesis project was called Edible Truce and it dealt with food facts, where our food comes from, uh, um, the processing of food. How, and so mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was an editorial conceptual image and, or the whole project was, but it kind of was to educate people on where our food comes from. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, I have kids, they were kind of at the age, they started asking questions of like, where does our food come from? Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, I could give them kind of a generic answer, <laughs> yeah. but as a kid, I don't think he was, you know, 
my child was four years old, so he wasn't really <laughs> fully grasping it. Yeah. So once again, I was tapping into the inspiration of my my son, and I decided to create an image that showed it. Yeah. And so um, took this picture of my family. They were sitting mm -hmm. at the the breakfast table. We were serving uh, we were serving them food. Mm -hmm. um, and it, then I went out, I went out, I traveled out to Indiana, mm -hmm. photographed a sugar bush. And during kind of the maple syrup process, learned a lot in the meantime, didn't realize wow. maple syrup was only produced in like one month out of the year. Oh my gosh. Um, kind of, you know, met these really cool guys that had the sugar bush. And created a grove of trees mm -hmm. inside, uh, inside my house that <laughs> showed my family eating pancakes, putting, you know, this, it's like this huge picture of pancake or this huge stack of pancakes. Oh but, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of within the grove of trees to kind of create this juxtaposition between, uh, the trees and the syrup that they're eating, the correlation, the contrast. Wow. Uh, and that's, that's what I did. That was when your favorite. It's one, yeah, it's one of those where I created <laughs> it. It was like the first one that kind of really came together. I mean, it took it took a long time to put it together, but mm -hmm. it's one when it's like I sat back and I looked at it when I was when I considered it done. That's probably one of the hardest things is trying to like think that you're actually completed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, look back, was completely happy with the image. It's exactly how I had set out to what I had set out to create. Yeah, and, uh, it made me actually start loving composites, and so that's awesome the impact of like a single frame image mm -hmm. um, was huge inside, you know, yeah. it's kind of, it's, 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 I like that it, you it involved kind of the power of an image. Yeah. And I like that you involved like your, you know, your family and then like it inspired, it was inspired from your, you know, your children. <laughs> That's very cool. Okay. So I've got these pictures of the surfboards. So Sweet. we wanted to kind of have, uh, Carol's asking the surfboards are not a smart object. They are not a smart object. I just pulled oh. them over as pulled a them mask. In. Mm -hmm. And Let's see here. nice. We could have a huge tutorial on just smart objects. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm, to be honest, I'm actually kind of just straying away from them for this for this purpose mm -hmm. um, because we could get go down kind of a rabbit hole with them <laughs> yeah cool guys we have about 31 minutes until we head over to discord for the design feedback um, looking forward to those challenges so hopefully you're still working on them uh, that newspaper advertisement for a superhero or supervillain whichever Oh my gosh. <laughs> Something just happened. Let's see. Grabbed a group. It's created two groups here for me. Sorry. I, I used my shortcuts. Uh huh. And my shortcuts. There we go. Grabbed my bus layer here. So my bus was being picked up. Do you know what, um, what, like file or project that you worked on, like how many layers you had or the most layers you've had in a, a project? <laughs> um, I had well over 700 layers in one image. Oh my gosh. Um, now I, you know, to, to talk about that, it's, we had, I had, I had like 110 pieces of the image some of them uh -huh. were very small, but every every piece had a like a folder or group. Every, yeah, I mean, we had a group because we were doing shadows and we were doing light yeah, and we were doing yeah. color. So every time we dropped an image in, it had it it had like five uh, supportive modes yeah. to kind of get it to match. Oh my gosh, that's um, wild! <laughs> so because of that, the files just grew. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> So I'm going to just create my own shadow under the. 
Nice. Under the surfboards right here. Thank you, Wade, for plugging in those links for the challenges and to join Discord. So make sure to do that. Uh, Fairy's asking, do you always sample a dark color to create a shadow? Uh, no, I mean, most shadows are darker, but you are going to be grabbing darker colors. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Photoshop has the option where you can do a drop shadow. I usually tend to fall away from a drop shadow because it doesn't allow you to manipulate it. So right, I always create right. my own shadow as a separate, you know, a separate layer. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Fairy's also like 700 layers. <laughs> my laptop will like, will explode if I work with 700 layers. <laughs> oh, that, that picture we were just talking about with the, the syrup. Uh -huh. uh, I got to the point, I mean, it was, it was a huge file. Yeah. Um, it was kind of my first thing, so I didn't narrow some of my layers down, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're using smart objects, going back to smart objects or smart, um, oh, they, they eat up more, yeah, space, <laughs> yeah. And because of that, like your files can grow and grow and grow. Oh my uh, god, I know. So, I think only this last year i realized one of my files had gotten so big that i had to save it as that like large document format as a psb and not as a psd and i was like what is this <laughs> yeah um thank you robert for finding weston syrup image um he just linked it so oh, if you want to check you. that out head over to the chat nealis was asking how big was the file nine gigabytes <laughs> uh i don't remember <laughs> anything over two gigabytes you have to start saving as that P uh, PSB PSB mm -hmm. so I know I was well over nine images or or over two gigabytes mm -hmm. I'm gonna just put a little bit of color mm -hmm. shading underneath the board and I'm not gonna go too crazy yeah with this shadow very nice <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca's asking should the surfboards be on the rack <laughs> uh great question I don't know it's not really a surf rack and so if they were <laughs> stuck underneath it so I I am just you're like from a visual it's from fine. a visual standpoint <laughs> yeah. yeah from a visual standpoint um <laughs> They would, there would have been a gap between the surfboards and the and the bus. And so I, I just, feel like they look cuter coming to the front, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, it's kind of like right <laughs> at the playful. front. More so, mm -hmm. um, playful. They're short boards. They're not long boards. So I think I can get away with it if I want to get like super technical with a yeah. surfer who's out there who wants to question me. So <laughs> Any surfers out there? <laughs> so here's the surfboards. Um, Color-wise, I haven't checked the color on these. They're not too bad. Um, Carol's asking, did you cut out the windows offline or did I miss that? Which I, you mentioned, I did, yeah. up, I did cut up the windows offline. Um, and I can address that a little bit right now. Just when I was trying to clean up the masks, what I did is I did a full cutout. Mm -hmm. um, so I did the windows cutout. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Intense. Um, <laughs> so I used the pen tool. Um, because these are straight edges, I use the pen tool, mm -hmm. um, move those around and then after I cut them all out, it just, it, it was completely, you know, nothing was there. There was no windows yeah. there. Yeah. And then, uh, I went back and sorry, uh, then I went back and I just started brushing in. Mm -hmm. Now I was lucky because the what was behind this was just a white wall. Yeah. And so uh, I went back and I brushed in a little bit of the wall. So this is a little bit, maybe like 50% opacity of what was yeah. brushed back in. And so it just kind of creates an opaque look uh, or fill. So it's still, you know, you're not looking. It still works. Clear, mm -hmm. clear gra glass. Uh, but as was mentioned right at first, you know, we don't have a driver. 
But, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we've, we've got to fix, we need, to, we need to put a driver there and then we will kind of do the same effect. We'll um, mask him back yeah. in. Yeah. Um, that looks great. Okay, so here's where we're at. Um, curious if anything is jumping out at anybody. There's a few things that are sticking out for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn off these as I work with uh, my bottom layer again. Nice. A uh, couple questions. Uh, Fairy's asking, do you have tips to create uh, shadows? Um, tips for the shadows is, as you saw, like I created, I I grabbed the mask of the mm -hmm. bus. Um, just like flipped it. I, so I grabbed this mask of the bus. And I flipped it, but I just used what was there. So the shape was there. I wasn't drawing it all mm -hmm. from scratch. Um, so as I flipped it, it worked, um, but I, I was using, and these are all soft shadows if you're yeah. using hard shadows. And then one thing that I really like when you're trying to put the shadow into it is you can do use the displacement map. Yeah, and yeah. And displacement map will, it will move the shadow, it will distort the shadow and kind of wrap it to the edges of highlights and shadows within the picture. Mm -hmm. so if you had something that was very textured and you were putting a shadow on there, uh, I would encourage you to use your shadow with a displacement mask mm -hmm. or a displacement map. And then that will allow it to kind of feel more natural. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you don't do that, kind of a quick cheat is uh, you can grab the smudge tool. Oh, uh-huh. Um, so the smudge tool, if I can try to do a quick sample <laughs> of it. Um, allows you to kind of push the edges around yeah and you can kind of shape the edge How of you your want. shadow of where you want it to go yeah that's a quick easy way a little cheat yeah <laughs> especially if you're working with like something small i would not encourage it i mean with too much detail yeah yeah for sure but it is quick when you're just kind of you're, you're visually eyeing it mm-hmm Okay, so I started. Uh, Rebecca's asking, is there a SW plugin to help projecting shadows of a subject if the direction of the light source is known? Uh, I don't know. That's so that I don't know that one. Yeah. I don't I'm know if there's a plugin. Not sure. Because it's because it is, I mean, you can do the drop shadow of Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, it's one that you know I, I use very sparingly based off mm -hmm. of how you know how you want to use it, but you can't change it or manipulate it like you are yeah, just a solid that's layer. True. Um, with compositing, I want to have as much freedom as possible to be able to always alter an image. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! Some people are suggesting what should go in the uh, in the VW bus. <laughs> uh oh, that I know. <laughs> Adjective Beaver says, alternatively, you could leave out the driver and place a bunch of screaming people in the back. <laughs> uh, Maine says, please create an animal driver. How amazing would it be if a cow if a cow was driving? <laughs> or a dog <laughs> from Carol. <laughs> Interesting. So we're going to get rid of, uh, I'm going to go back to cleaning it up. I'm going to turn off these layers because sometimes the color and change it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick. Oh yeah, there you go. Stamp tool. Is that the stamp tool? Yep, stamp tool, nice. just kind of sampling some, uh, some of the areas around it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Someone says, put a giraffe in. <laughs> and Carol says, what's your plan for a flat tire then? <laughs> Oh no, people are getting wild. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. This is kind of farther back in the image, so I'm not like super picky with it, but I do yeah, want it yeah. to look um, as Just clean as up. possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reverb Mike says it's the VW from Lost. Oh, I, you know, I never saw Lost. I, so I am not 100% what that is referencing. Yeah. I 
I don't either, actually. I mean, I watched some of it, but I didn't I didn't finish it or I didn't see it through. It was it was hard to watch. It was kind of like all over the place and I had some <laughs> weird stuff going on. So I think I got through maybe two or three episodes and I was just like, this is this isn't this is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So just under 20 minutes, you guys, until we have design feedback. So make sure that you, you know, submit your challenges soon or fin be wrapping them up soon. Um, make those last minute changes. Cool. Uh, I'm finishing up there. So that cool. was just a little bit of a distraction for me. Um, <laughs> So it was sticking out there on the bus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get our sky back in. Nice. Looking good. Okay. So the next thing is I was going back and we were, you know, since we're talking about, um, We were talking about like what to put in this bus. Yeah. My original thought was, you know, oh, like, you know, because it was a summer day, kind of like the road yeah. trip feel, like freedom. The, yeah. <laughs> the whole goal with this picture really is like, yeah, let's create a narrative around like what's happening, like what, you know, if we can envision ourselves, like what would we be doing down this, you know, why would we be driving down this road? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so I kind of went back. I had some Adobe stock where I was looking at, um, you know, I was looking at kind of some of these mm -hmm. things right here where it's like, you know, hand sticking out the window, uh, maybe a hitchhiker or something that's happening down the road. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was looking back through the pictures in Lightroom and there was this picture that first I thought it was like this really big, I thought it was like a really big just splot on the, <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like oh, I got to go clean that up. Uh -huh. And then I noticed it was in like two or three different places as I went through the different frames that I was taking the pictures of. And I realized it was a butterfly. So there was this big monarch through, through, you know, that kind of flew through the frame. Yeah. So I kind of was thinking like, oh, what could that's kind of fun. What could we do with butterflies, right? Like what's, yeah. What, butterflies are magical. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and so I kind of, you know, I did like a quick search on monarch butterflies and I started seeing in the uh, migration of monarchs that mm -hmm. went through and it was just like amazing so That's... just viewing other images here because it shows but this top one right here in the middle uh -huh. at the bottom um it kind of has this shape of the wing yeah and the shape of the wing was matching kind of the shape of the vw bus so i was thinking oh that's kind of cool yeah so last night i just kind of played around with a quick idea of adding some butterflies you know to the picture mm-hmm um, this is, this is kind of my own design challenge. I would love to get some feedback from everybody that's out there. If you think this is working or if this is not working. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I hurry and grabbed, uh, some butterflies. We added them into the image. Uh, what you're going to see here is the butterflies. Oh, cute. So I love that. All of a sudden I was like, oh, that's this migration of monarchs. yes i love that that's so, very summer <laughs> um so i want to know you know is this something is this a is this something that you think is working in the image yeah and, let us know in the chat and we should you know i could should kind of pursue this uh this <laughs> thought or uh is this something i should just kind of abandon and go back to something a little bit more simple so would love to get some feedback yes um, give us some feedback in the chat let us know if you are a go for the butterflies and yeah <laughs> i, the I like the them. show arabella is going to be the one to say yay or nay so she's going to give <laughs> a thumbs up or a thumbs down <laughs> well i'm um, a, i'm a fan already so i mean let us know in the chat <laughs> so i mean these butterflies uh let me try to pull up a screen here uh let me show you the butterflies of the monarchs and I'll walk you through a little bit about what I did to grab these. <laughs> now, the thing I like about these monarchs is they're uh, they're really easy to work with because yeah. I don't have any shadows. I'm not putting them on anything. They're flying, and because right. the light's soft enough, 
it's going to allow me to do, you know, add a lot of butterflies very quickly without mm -hmm. going to too, he too heavy of a retouch, which yeah. whole goal was to finish this picture today. And that's uh, ultimately what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got some people that are loving it. <laughs> nice. Maine says, <laughs> Maine says, I would rather the butterfly see the butterfly as a driver, but I still like it this way. <laughs> At least we have animals. <laughs> Digging the monarchs. Reverb Mike says, yes, pollinators. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, so here was, this was the picture. This was kind of just a group I found on Adobe stock. Uh, so I grabbed an entire group of pictures, Sweet. Uh, or pictures of monarchs, and then I created a mask, um, created the mask of them. Yeah. Uh, Without those shadows too, since yep. I don't need them. This is uh, going back to, from the technical aspect. I did this mask a little bit differently. You know, mm -hmm. so far we've created masks with, uh, Kind of the color selector we've used masks with uh, the pen tool mm -hmm. uh, the quick select tool the new uh select subject tool with adobe yeah. this was one that i learned um a few years ago but it's really great if you're doing like hair fine detail yeah if we zoom in on some of these monarchs you know you've got these antennas yes and um you don't you don't want to lose that detail because that's really what can t show if it's a picture is you know, if it's retouched or not, because mm -hmm. it can lose the detail and you don't want to lose it. If it's there, keep it. Yeah. Uh, totally. So I created this mask by doing a, a channels mask. Mm -hmm. And so I went up to my channels and if you cycle through, you're going to look for the ones that have the most contrast. And so yes. my blue layer is going to be my biggest contrast. Okay. And so I'm going to copy my blue layer down here. And then I'm going to just grab my brush tool. I'm gonna come up to my overlay. We went over this a little bit yesterday about the mm -hmm. halo. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to just, it kind of acts as a magnet. So um, anything that's black, it's gonna stay black. Mm -hmm. Anything that's white, it's gonna stay white. So if you see like the shadow that was being cast down here, we want to get rid of that. Um, so if we're on white, we're just gonna quickly draw over that. As you can see, we're not, you know, I'm kind of being pretty free with it and I'm not, damaging the butterflies at yes all. yes and so oh, yeah that's kind of nice a quick mask that's super um, easy but i haven't lost any of this detail from these yeah. butterflies and then to keep with the masks it needs to just be black or white that's how it's that's how photoshop's going to read the light mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so if we go back to black that's I'm a quick tip paint over good little tip to paint back over these butterflies you can see how fast i'm moving through the brush yeah. um so it's really going to just pick it up but i'm not losing anything it's really cool and to save time i kind of have already read i've already done this but i wanted to show you what i did yeah uh, yeah no, that's awesome I went, I mean, I went back and forth so you can, you know, kind of brought back some of the grays in here. So I wanted to clean that up. Yeah. Um, so you end up kind of going back and forth. But anyways, I did that. It's a pretty quick, uh, you will spend some time on it, but it is pretty quick. Uh, once you get that, you're going to just drop that into yeah. your select tool. It's going to select everything. Make sure you're back on your RGB layer. Mm -hmm. And then you can go up here to select. You're going to do your select and mask tool. as it converts it. Very nice. Um, Barry and Jess say they love it. They love the butterfly. So that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just didn't know if it was just me. So this is uh, being a little bit slower to react. Make sure it's not popping <laughs> up on my second screen here. Here it comes. Nice. So I did a quick selection um did a new layer perfect all right you guys we have about nine minutes until we head over to discord so be wrapping up those challenges um i'm excited to see them the newspaper advertisements <laughs> for either a superhero or, or a super villain so I think my monarchs broke my computer. Oh no. 
<laughs> I'd say I'm kind of frozen up here, so just a second. Okay. <laughs> oh, Photoshop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yvonne's asking, how did he do it? Um, I didn't see what kind of mask did he use. And thank you, Wade, for replying. Yeah, he used a blue channel to make his selection. And we'll have this replay, um, this live stream available for replay afterwards. So do not worry. Yeah, so it was, uh, I did a channels, blue channel, blue copy, and then I was able to paint it to create a mask. Yes. Um, this is what the mask looked like when it was completed. Mm -hmm. And then instead of, you know, instead of taking all of these over, so I was using all these butterflies every single time, I just mm -hmm. applied the, the mask to a top layer so that I could just kind of cut and paste each one of these. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, then it kind of just became like a, a sticker effect. And I was grabbing one of these, mm -hmm. brought it over here to my picture. And just started pasting them all. Very nice. putting them where I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, the detail is super great inside these, uh, inside these. Yeah, models. it's really pretty. You'll see the antennas. Mm -hmm. uh, the sharpness is there. In the foreground, this is all pretty soft. So yeah. really, I was just resizing these. Um, yeah, and them. you have to like think about like where they're at in terms of you know layering size, yeah, uh, a little blur, and kind so of depth of field. Go. Yeah, so we're gonna do some Gaussian blur. This one's jumping out really heavy at us. Um, gonna make that one a little blurry. Perfect. And maybe we'll move that one. Nice. That looks so cute. I love that. So that's what I did. As you can see, I've numbered them. Um, so far, we are now <laughs> up to 56. You're really good about renaming your layers. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you learn the hard way. So we yeah. have 56. Um, since butterflies seems to be a favorite, we're going to keep the butterflies. Yes. Yeah, people like it. So thank you, guys. And then we're going to just change that color just a little bit. I love the curves because uh, it's not going to change the density of the image. I'm going to bring the opacity down just a hair. <laughs> okay, so that is where we're at with our butterflies. Everything has been added in. So now we're Very getting down. Very nice. Um, since we're getting kind of towards the end, this is where the picture is kind of leading towards. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I wanted to kind um, of get into what I, I finish an image off with. Yes, yes. Uh, Nikki commented, a cool spinoff would be the same photo, but nighttime and with fireflies. That'd be oh, fun. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we should collaborate, Nikki. Let's, let's, uh, yes. let's get something going. <laughs> For sure. No, this looks great. I haven't been around uh, fireflies a whole lot, so it's something i would uh it'd be cool to kind of cool to experience, experience. Yeah, yeah for sure so when i get to the final part of an image and you put all these layers together you painted things in sometimes uh things start to change just a little bit mm -hmm. and with uh with film photography with digital photography there's always a little bit of you know in, in digital photography it's noise um in film photography it's a grain and right so if you look uh, let's see if this is going to show this. Um, so you're going to see a little bit of difference. Like if you're looking where this road is, you can see kind of a little bit of noise in this road that's not matching yes. up with the, with the bus. bus. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to get that to look the same. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of like probably the final steps that I do to try to really bring an image together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're sure. going to add some noise. We're going to we have to have noise needs to work with something. So I'm going to just convert that all to black. I'm going to use these pixels. Uh, it's going to be uniform. We can change the amount. I'm not going to play with that. Uh, monochromatic. It's just all going to be black or white. Mm -hmm. And we're going to apply that to the whole image. We're going to go nice soft light. 
Nice. And so now you can see that obviously this is a very dramatic effect. <laughs> yes. But, um, but you can see how the noise is making everything look like it was taken with the same camera. Yes, yes. It unifies it all for sure. We're going to soften that, go back to the Gaussian blur. Uh, Fairy's asking, do you use a camera raw filter to color grade your artwork? I do. Um, if I'm compositing, I don't do a lot of color grading. I mean, I will color grade. I will, uh, you know, I'll use Lightroom, get the image. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. yesterday, we talked about getting yes. the image prepared Prepped. for Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And so I'll use that. I don't use a lot of presets. I try to do everything on my own. Um, you know, filters are kind of the big rage right now. And so everyone has a filter. Everyone can buy a preset. Yes. Um, but if you do that, then you need to also understand how it's being done. So yeah. you apply it to either other images or you know what to how to use it when it gets into Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'm going to blur these pixels just a, just a little bit because I don't want them hard. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to drop this opacity way down because we don't really want it to be a big part of the image. But if you, you know, you can, when you get in there, let's keep it at like 20%. Mm -hmm. so now you can see that. Uh, you can kind of see that there is a, you know, kind of like a fingerprint, uh, a digital print. Yes. Uh, the noise that's being transferred from the background into the car. Um, yeah, you know, that looks so good. Light, it's so lightly done. Um, you know, it changes the, the darkness, but we're going to address that in just a second mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. with the bus. Sweet. So we're going to do that. Um, we're going to add a gradient and brightness. Mm -hmm. Once again, we want to bring uh, attention to our bus. Bring that back up. That looks so fun. I love that. I don't want too much contrast, so we're not going <laughs> to worry about our blacks. <laughs> and we're going to convert that. Let's add this gradient in now. The spherical gradient so that puts emphasis yeah where we want Very the nice. viewers where we want to the viewers eyes to go mm -hmm. that's definitely an important aspect yeah i mean you're the artist you get to pretty much you know you're communicating something to somebody and what you what you want it to say and how you want it to be mm -hmm. said and what they want to look at um yeah. you know we're kind of doing that with light and we're also doing that with um depth of field sharpness you know it's sharper around the the bus itself yeah yeah um one other thing Very i like nice. to do to kind of keep keep you know when we're talking about eyes is uh because everything bleeds off the frame yeah we want to really keep the uh, the viewer so that the uh the attention is staying in frame um there was another photographer that showed me this a few years ago it's something mm -hmm. that's kind of stuck with me and so I like to add like a small gradient um, to the bottom. Ah, okay. Very and nice. we're going to change that to a soft light and we're going to bring it down. We don't want it to be dramatic. Uh, it, you know, we want just it to look like natural. enough. Yeah. Just enough that like your eye will pick up that this is kind of the bottom of the frame without having mm -hmm. to go right to the hard edge. Got it. And That's we a good do that tip. also to the top. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, we are ready for design feedback, you guys. Um, Weston, we'll, we'll pick this up in a little bit as soon as we finish reviewing some of these challenges. Sounds um, great. Yeah. Cool. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, cool. Let me just go ahead and refresh that real quick. Yeah, I'm trying to find my stop sharing button. Perfect. All right. So again, quick refresher. 
uh, today's Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, thank you to Voodoo Bell, um, always fun challenges from her, uh, was to design a newspaper advertisement for a superhero or a supervillain um, using Adobe fonts and the character styles panel. So super exciting. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, swipe all the way at the bottom here. Okay, this is from Frank Bohm. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Day eight. This is Scarecrow. Ooh, I'm loving these. <laughs> So wanted for extreme scarring <laughs> or scaring, <laughs> Scarecrow. <laughs> this is really cool. That's nice. Yeah. I love um, the texture and kind of like the destruction of this flyer. I like that. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like, you know, what's that one? Um, is it Uncle... Uncle Tom, maybe, where he's like pointing, we need you or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Uncle Sam, Uncle Tom. Uncle Sam. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this, no, is, this is so great. well done. Yeah. I mean, I think my favorite part of this is uh, the rope as it comes out of. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. And, and uh, you know, hits the text down below. So, I mean, the overlay is really done. There's some nice shadowing of that rope. Yes. So yes you get, yes, to, yes, you get to see that dimension. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And it's, I mean, it's, he's matched, you know, he's matched those shadows on the rope from the shadows of the, uh, on the scarecrow. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Where'd you get this scarecrow picture from? That's, I that's, know. that's impressive. <laughs> also the hat that the, the, the scarecrow is wearing kind of reminds me of the hat from Harry Potter for some reason. Oh yeah. Um, My no, this is great. Harry Potter. Oh <laughs> no, this is awesome. I really love this like gradient sun texture behind him too. I think that really like helps frame the poster the flyer yeah it kind of adds this kind of just definitely moody like yeah bit, like, this anger feel to it yeah yeah totally kind of like fire like almost like this like heat i don't know <laughs> i think that's like i mean that's like this shows like a good point of like what color does like it creates yeah. moods very well yeah oh totally so kind of like fiery red sunset or you know the mm -hmm. background is burning yes exactly like you're, you're next type of a thing is yeah just, exactly <laughs> But I, I love, I really love that the flyer also, I mean, emulates kind of as if like part of the edges might have been like next to fire or like burned. So there's just like a lot of, um, you know, a lot of things working together. That yeah, no, this really is well. really well done. There's, yeah. a lot, there's a lot happening in this picture. Yeah, so. yeah. very good. And, and I love the font too. I think the font works here really well. If you're good with font, you'll, you'll go far because... <laughs> Very nice. Awesome. Um, oh, we had another one submit right just now. But thank you uh, to Frank. So I'll just go ahead and click on this one. This is from JD. Uh, wanted Ice King supervillain for disturbing the peace. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> very nice. Um, I really like it. this. This is very scary. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it's, uh, it kind of got this old Western font going similar to the Scarecrow. I know. Thought, yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Maybe it works that's really theme. well. It works really well with these posters. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of would want to wonder if what it would look like if, because I really see this like nice gradient, like mm -hmm. down here at the bottom. If maybe that was also like all the way around too, that could be kind of cool to play with. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's not. I mean, it's a totally different. I mean, it's that's what's great about these challenges it's it's a totally different style i mean this is you know the deep like the details a lot softer this is yes yes uh, more illustrative than the other one um mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but it stands out this one uh i mean the text you're not seeing the the detail through the text like we did on the other one right right uh, which probably is you know like once again being super critical but uh just changing the the text just a little bit like dropping the opacity five ten percent yeah or maybe playing with the blending mode maybe perhaps blending mode would be a good way to go yeah yeah for sure no this is great um I would love to see maybe just like a little bit more space up at the top. I think the the text maybe is like hitting a little bit. A little um, crowded. A little crowded maybe, yeah. yeah but other works, than that, It works yeah. with the overlay down below where it says yes. icing. Yes, yes. Um, but I, yeah, now that you bring that up, I mean, I can see that like it, it has a little bit of a crowding. That I think because like on the left and right hand side, like you have a space, you know, so I kind of want it to have 
a little bit more space up at the top and bottom maybe i think that would help make it breathe a little bit but other than that i think that's i think it's great it's fun I, i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> very cool i think uh um, from yesterday and today mm -hmm. people uh People seem to be leaning towards the villain characters more than the superheroes. Yeah, I know. I feel like because there's just so much more to do with the villain. Like there's so much more like textures and things that you can really bring out um, that can, I don't know, can be kind of scary. <laughs> I think the backstory of villains are. Cool. Oh, it's more, so fascinating. A little more fascinating. Yes, than it's way more fascinating. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so this is from Teresa. <laughs> this is fun. Uh towels the smallest show on earth tiny tiger oh my gosh this is so cute <laughs> i don't know i don't think i'm scared but i like love that it's like circus and like you it's know yeah it's super it's play so playful there's a lot of there's a lot of layers happening to make this you know to pull this off oh yeah absolutely no i think this is i think all the elements that you have here really make sense with the th circus theme and this kind of like you know, you've got this, uh, what do you call it? Starburst effect mm -hmm. in the back too, that I think really goes well with that circus theme. Did, uh, so this is a, uh, th this theme also has like a font challenge with it. Is that? Yes. Yeah. So they're supposed to be using Adobe fonts um, and then like character styles, the character styles panel. So um, I think this font, this font is right on. Like, yeah, I mean, it really exactly, is. This is exactly what I would be looking at mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, kind of for that circus theme yeah I love, I love the shadow of the cat inside the tent yes yes same here and i do love this kind of you know ribbon effect here and you've got the text in there i would probably maybe play around with the text a little bit more to make sure that it actually you know it's not here fitting 100 percent but not fitting 100 percent. but that's you know you've got a lot of text so <laughs> it makes sense but because it's a whimsical image it i mean it, it works it works it, it, mm -hmm. it could be cleaned up a little bit but i mean mm -hmm. it, it definitely works yes yeah <laughs> i like the coloring the coloring's all pretty seamless um, yeah exactly a little yeah bit retro feel and even it. the stars too like the framing it, yeah. it works here so also i love that <laughs> talking about thrilling event in the brilliant COVID lockdown performances <laughs> very nice nod to you know current happenings no i, I love there's this a youtube channel for this uh for i this. know right <laughs> You it's get a so lot fun. of people watching cats, right? I know. <laughs> It'd be funny if like the it wasn't really scary at all. It was just kind of like <laughs> just cute little cat videos. Um, awesome. Great job, Teresa. All right, on to our next one. Ooh, okay. So this is from yesterday's challenge. So yeah, this is um fun. we'll take a look at it. We'll we'll just, you know, go back in time a little. Um, sorry, let me see the name. Abraham. Uh superpower redo. Uh, Photoshop creative challenge from yesterday's. Wow. This is a Trekkie or a Star Wars fan? Yeah. This is neat. Yeah, this is uh, a little bit different. I mean, yesterday we had a lot of flames. Yes. I remember happening yes. and we had kind of the, the blue flames happening around the, the wormhole. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I kind of, I mean, it's. It's kind of like unrealistic that there'd be like this random brick wall, <laughs> but it's, it's just like fun. It's like, you know. Yeah. I mean, we all have our own style. This, exactly. You know, this, this style definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's surreal. It's, it's very well done. You know I mean? It, yeah. it, it is surreal. It might not be, um, you know, exactly the, you know, exactly what we all. Yeah, to do, totally. This person's definitely, definitely likes this, likes the, you know, the concept. Um, yeah. You know, I like that you can still see some of the, the character. It looks like the face has been distorted here yes, inside yes. the wormhole. Um, I think maybe that it looks like almost like a watercolor feel effect happening. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this edge maybe is a little hard right here on the circle for me, but uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but I think it's I think it's good. Yeah. You're right though, there is some kind of like there's marbly texture. Or like watery texture but yeah i like that you can see this brick texture too within these because i don't know if i'm assuming these were added on you know yeah they weren't so. there yesterday so i'm I'm curious what the uh yeah maybe they, were they just have like, any if they have any meaning you know like yeah um, 
you know, if we're just, you know, we're just playing around for technique purposes mm -hmm. or if there's like, mm -hmm. what's, what's the story talking about, you know, backstories, what's this, the backstory behind this picture? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, this is awesome. Well, great job. You know, love, love seeing all your challenges. Um, great. Okay. So, oh, okay. <laughs> this is from Barry. Uh, John Wick reference. Ooh, okay. This is interesting. Oh, and I think somebody in the chat sent uh, said that like Val gave them fonts to use. So um, I think maybe they could choose to use them or not or go in a different direction. I don't know. But okay. this is cool. Yeah, so this fun. is different. This mm -hmm. is a, kind of a, the agent's file. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like this kind of little paperclip thing happening here and a little coffee stain. Yeah, I'm trying to see if, if that maybe that was just like a... You know, is that a stock image that somebody was able to grab of the, you know, the paper texture or if it was, you know, yeah. and brushes? Um, yeah, you know. that's unique. I like that there's this like little like dimensional thing happening with the image too. Yeah, the shadow. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think the text works great here too. I think the text works perfect. I mean, they yes. did a great job fitting that in, you know, compartmentalizing it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And also this kind of like stamp um, yeah. thing going on here too. I think it. I think it works. I think. I mean, with any image, and especially with this image, there's like mm -hmm. immediate recognition of what's going on. Yes. And because we're just inundated with so much, you know, so many pictures and mm -hmm. so much every day. Yeah. Uh, we have to have that immediate recognition kind of before we pass it over too quickly. So. Yeah. Yeah. This looks awesome. Great job, Barry. <laughs> All right. So now let's see. Ooh, okay. So this one. Oh, they did like two of them. Ooh, a couple colors. Okay. So this is from Black Becky. <laughs> she says, I have a serious dilemma because the brownish ad looks the most original, but I've been doing my entire project in two colors. So what do you guys think? Which is better? So this is the original. Do you want to be a master? Join the potions club at the Magic Academy. That's so fun. <laughs> you already had a reference to the Harry Potter. I know. Yeah. So hat. I was trying to think what the name of it was. The sorting hat. <laughs> the sorting hat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is who's the teacher? Is Snape? <laughs> Is it Snape? Snape. I, I, in at least one of the books, probably. I mean, they, I know, they, right? <laughs> okay. So this is the original. And then they were also working in these other colors. So we've got the green. And we have this purple as well. Which one? Which one are you a fan of? Ooh. Um, I like the vibrance of these the colors. Yeah, me like, too. I think that's like really attracted me to them. But I, I do. I, mean, I do I tend, still like the original. I, I tend to go to muted tones, so I'm yeah. like, could you, you know, could you take this purple and mute it just a little bit, or take right, it right, mute it so it's not. Maybe it's like halfway between the original and this to see mm -hmm. if that, you know, if that mm -hmm. keeps it. Because you have these great looking vintage bottles. And yeah. And I think that works well with the kind of like more of this faded. That's right. This like sepia tone look. I yes. Think that kind of has this, you know, old Western, you know, dungeon yeah, dragon with the candles going on. So I I don't know. I, I, that's, I think that's my biggest thing is the, the shape of the bottles and the vibrance of the other two colors maybe mm -hmm. are... Yeah, I it yeah, I'd be curious to see what it would look like with maybe just like the purple, but like more faded, like kind of you know, I don't know, like some maybe a happy medium. <laughs> we've got two. Let's see, we've got two that say thumbs up on the purple, two that say thumbs up or a hundred percent on the green. Uh huh. And we got three thumbs up on the brown. So OMG, yep. So the brown is definitely the brown is winning. Is winning. Uh, I would I would tend to I would tend to add another thumbs up to that. Yeah, um, I think so too. I think it, it it just works in this situation. Um, but the font is great. I like it. Um, I think it works. I am curious to see if maybe like, you know, I, I think they're the same font, right? Maybe but actually yeah. they kind of look a little a little different. You have the A, you have the A and the E's, mm -hmm. which are, one looks like it might be a, 
S's are the same. So I mean, it's oh, actually, yeah, it, it is the same, same but maybe they just just bigger. This a bigger, master mm -hmm. might have put a little bold stretch onto it. Yeah, yeah, but no, this is great, and I like that this um there's you know the grain in it, and then the kind of like um faded out look around the edges. Yeah, I think the fade. I think the fade to the gradient adds a lot to it. Uh, yeah. If it was a hard edge, I don't think it would be as uh, strong of an edge. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Or I could be, I don't know, maybe someone could play with this, but if it was a hard edge, maybe like kind of add like fake tape or like something where you're like, you know, it shows that it's being attached to the flyer or something like that. I don't know. Cool. Okay. Here's another one. This is Ralph. Uh, in the works wanted for crimes against humanity okay so this is like the same image this from that other one image. so maybe yeah. that was something that was given very well yeah yeah but yeah we've seen that we've seen that image a couple of times now mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. no this is this is cool um probably work a little bit more on this text you know yeah, i think the text and the picture um is is too crowded because you have kind of a bleed over from the image into the text. Yes. So yeah. It either has to be like all or nothing. So I feel like yeah. it's, it's not committed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I, there's probably too much space from the crimes against humanity to the wanted want to bring that together. So that there's a little bit of a, uh, more of a relationship between. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Definitely. I but do like the is... texture of the. Me too. The, that's, I mean, that's a nice choice because it's, it adds to the illustration effect that's happening with the image. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Of the Ice King. I don't know if that's that was the same. <laughs> that's, yeah, it's just the same thing. <laughs> but I mean, you've got, I mean, they've definitely looked in, you know, when you, this crystal or whatever this is above him. Yeah. You know, they, they have kind of this spherical, brighter yellow around it. So it looks mm -hmm. like it has a little bit of a glow. Yeah, I um, like that. So that's nice. Yeah. Nice Very attention great. to detail. Mm -hmm. Good job, Ralph. Okay, let's see. So I think this might have been from yesterday. Wow, this is like intense. Yeah, this is, this is from Pat. This is really cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot happening here. Yeah. I really love that the flames are kind of like in the hair too. It's like yeah, kind of flame like. It, it's called, uh, you know, there's the, 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 in art, there's like the golden circle. And so your eye kind of, you know, is drawn around and you're kind of creating like this you know, this snail shell effect that kind of starts right in the middle yeah. and kind of swings out and around following the lightning or the flame that goes up towards the top. And then it kind of catches. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of leading lines here. Yeah, so it kind of, it kind of keeps your eye moving in this mm -hmm. spherical shape around the circle. So it's like- Yeah, there's super. a lot of circle and like rounded shape. Yeah, for sure. So that's it's very cool. Yeah. yeah, I like the coloring very- mm -hmm. uh, Me too. Yeah, very, very cool. All right. Well, I think that's good enough for today. Thank you guys so much for your challenges. This was really awesome to look through. <laughs> I really like the wanted posters. <laughs> Super yeah. fun. You started off with some good ones. Too. Yeah, definitely. But keep on, um, you know, entering those submissions. People are great in the community and they always share feedback. So, um, you know, if you didn't get a chance to submit yesterday, then, you know, all right, we'll just jump back into your stuff, Weston, and you can wrap up in a few minutes. Okay, yeah, we're coming down to it. Um, I think we're about 90% there. Uh, there's obviously, with retouching, you're gonna just, you know, when to stop playing with an image is kind of uh, is sometimes hard, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, so let's see, we're gonna, we are dropping in kind of, we were talking when we left off Uh, we left off with uh, keeping our eye kind of centered into the the air, the picture. So I added mm -hmm. this bottom gradient um, that you can see it's just yes. light. And then we're doing that same to the top. So that's why it's kind of heavily dark on the top. We're going to drop that to a uh, soft light. Yes. We don't want it to be too light, but we just want it to be just once again, I think I've mentioned it way too many times during this uh, <laughs> thing is like light has dimension. So we're going to add some dimension to the image. Um, and there we go. That kind of brings our eye to it. Mm -hmm. We have uh, another question that came up was about dodge and burn. 
If yes. I do any dodge and burn to the images, it's one of the last steps that I do. Cause if I can get an image, like I'm really happy with where this image is right now. Um, if I can get the image to this point, uh, a little bit of dodge and burn just to kind of bring in, you know, bring up, bring down some highlights yeah. and some shadows. Add so, some dimension. Uh, I've got an action for this. I'm just going to build it out myself, but, um, we have a question from, oh, their name is called online shopping, I guess. <laughs> How did he remove the walls from the car's window without removing reflections from the windows? I think you kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. So I went and removed them all. So it just kind of looked like the frame. So there were zero windows there. Mm -hmm. And then I brushed back um, the opacity. Mm -hmm. So I came, uh, so from the mask, I brushed it back in yeah. just so that the reflections were there. Yeah, um, yeah. There was a white wall. I didn't have people or other, um, you know, objects in the background that were the distractions. So I was, yeah. you know, I, I kind of got lucky with the, the car image that we were using. Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm creating a dodge and burn layer. Uh, we're just going to go 50% gray. Nice. And this happens all the time. I have this preserved transparency on, so. <laughs> There we go. So we're going to have it there. We're going to change that to an overlay layer. Okay. If I turn it on and off, you can see it's not doing anything no, yeah. to the picture. Mm -hmm. um, then we're going to grab our burn tool. Okay. I'm not going to use 100%. We're going to keep that, uh, the exposure, we're going to keep it down. We're keeping it on our shadows and we're just going to add a little bit of darkness of where we want some mm -hmm. added dimension. Yeah. Just make uh, your darks right darker. Around, yeah. A little darks darker, maybe right here at the base of the car. Yeah. Um, Very nice. You know, because we have these great leading lines of the road. Yeah. We're gonna just bring, accentuate those lines just a little bit by grabbing the, Mm -hmm. bottom edge of the weeds and you're doing this with just like a soft brush so i have a soft brush um you know i'm at zero hardness so mm -hmm. i'm at soft brush i'm painting right on I, I, i'm in black and i'm painting on a gray layer and yeah. we're in overlay nice um and i'm just kind of like you know bringing in a little dimension of where i want yeah some added uh shadows because this was a fairly flat or overhead uh, light, mm -hmm. um, I want to kind of shape the image a little bit more myself. Um, that's awesome. That looks really good. So that's there. We're going to now change over to white. White is going to do the exact same. Uh, we're going to go over to our dodge tool. Dodge is going to be on highlights. We're going to have the exposure really low. Okay. Um, and once again, we are just creating mm -hmm. kind of where we want the light, where it was would be hitting. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit more here on the foreground. Thank you, Wade. Yes. If you rewatch the session, this will be available later. Um, he discusses how to mask the windows. So earlier in the stream. That's looking good. Okay, computer's thinking. A little bit higher up here. I really love the butterflies. I think that like helps it make it more like light and airy. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's this, very it's, fun. It's the reason why this car is driving down this road. Yes. You know, the... <laughs> I think someone earlier had mentioned, you know how you had that like sign in front of the VW? Yes. Um, they're like, you know, maybe the sign says like, like beware, like <laughs> butterflies fly roaming through or something like that. <laughs> Butterfly tours. You know, yes. Oh, yeah. Cute. I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. This is just, uh, you can see what I've done here. It's just changed um, the dimension of yeah. the, 
the looks light awesome. just a little bit where I wanted to kind of bring some some hits of shadows and some highlights. Yes. Um, this is at 100% opacity. I don't want it. Everything I do is kind of just kind of small increments, so I don't want to go too heavy with it. I'm going to drop that down to maybe about a 40, 45 uh, okay. percent opacity. Um, that yeah. way it's there, but it's, it's not too much. Subtle. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I do, this is how I finish off my images, is I add a solid color. Uh huh. Um, this kind of, if we've, be, we've been adding everything. We've tried to change color. We've gotten them as close as possible, but it might not be 100%. Uh -huh. um, I use this buttery look quite a bit because uh, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of warm. It's inviting. This is a summer day, you know, yeah. summer day image. Um, and then I'll just change that to color. Makes it all monotone. And then I'm just going to dial this the opacity. And it's just going to bring it in just a little bit. Ooh. But it, what it does is it actually it unifies everything. It does. From shadows, highlights, you know, the different subjects that you have in the image. Yes. And so it yes. kind of creates this, you know, kind of final touch to make it, you know, if someone's looking at your picture, they might have to second guess, like, is, you know, hey, was yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Are these and separate I think it, pieces or not? It goes with, like, your vibe, too, where it's, like, a slightly muted, too, um, you know, kind of cinematic. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty much there. I mean, there's, there's some other things. If I had a little bit stronger light, we might do some lens flares. Um, yeah, yeah. To bring it in there, you know, there's... Yeah really popular it's i was kind of i'm somewhat curious somewhat curious of why they're done all the time but uh <laughs> no like that I, was looks great. I was looking at this awesome photographer um he's out of texas and i was looking at his work and i could tell i was like you know he i'm like i don't know why he did it it definitely worked with the picture mm -hmm. um okay yeah you, know, you know but he just he had this like sun flare that was just you know for some reason he had put it there um yeah. you know it was working so you know you we could put it in there um you super know, see, fun see the blend modes yeah yeah Once no that again, looks great <laughs> light has dimension so you might want to do two or three different layers of a, the gradient to make it you know feel somewhat more realistic but anyways there we go there's the yeah. final awesome. image um, after <laughs> two days of trying to get everything from where we started with just the main image perfect Turn off That's everything awesome. so you can see it. There's where we started. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in for day two with Weston Fuller. Hopefully, he'll be posting this final image somewhere on his feed and Instagram or something. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see it, the final product. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. And yeah, stick around. We've got an, uh, the XD Creative Challenge and a fun stream right after. So, uh, all right. Well, we'll say bye to Weston. <laughs> bye. Bye. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>